I have the 83 inch LG C2 in the house and it's fantastic. I'll go over it inside and out and due to some surprise advances in the TV world, I think it's a perfect time to know exactly which OLEDs to buy and which to avoid. All of that right now. What's up, it's Be The Installer and I have the second 83 inch LG C-Series, the C2, and there's some similarities and some differences over the C1 and some interesting things to talk about in general regarding buying TVs. So please make sure to smash the like button when you find the video useful and subscribe and set the bell to all if you haven't done so already so you're notified when I upload a new video. And with all the hype on some of these TVs, I'd like to know what products you're most excited for. The larger OLEDs, QLEDs, or some of the new smaller QD OLEDs from Samsung or Sony. Let me know that in the comments. And new to 2022 is Be The Consumer, my new channel where I test and review all consumer products. Check out the new videos on the Tesla Model Y Performance and the GoPro Hero 10 that we use to film much of the Tesla video with. Both are up now and many more to come, so check it out. So the LG C2 is supposed to look new and updated, which is true in the smaller sizes, but this 83 inch looks nearly identical to the 83 inch C1 of last year. Maybe it's because the 83 inch C1 came out so late in the year, LG was pretty happy with the structure and just decided to stick with it for the C2 model. Unlike the smaller LG C2s, this 83 inch does not have the new stand that swivels or the matte like finish on the back. The 83 inch is also the exact same weight at around 91 pounds. The only external difference I found after looking back on my 83 inch LG C1 unboxing was that instead of all four HDMI 2.1 ports facing downward, the C2 has two of the HDMI ports facing on the side and two down facing. Curious, but it looks to be the only change. I'll talk more about differences in a second, but the remote is same as last year. And I've had beef with the LG Magic Remote for years. Before I even had a beautiful LG OLED, I always felt the remote looked like a toy versus a quality product. So this is slightly improved over two years ago, but it's still too bulky and clicky. Many may like the cursor, but a revamp on the whole thing would be a big win for LG. But enough about the remote. Let's turn this TV on and see how the C2 stacks up. But first a word from our sponsor, Masterworks. There's a lot of talk regarding inflation lately and it can seem like something distant and intangible. Does inflation at 40 year highs have a real impact on our day to day lives? The answer is yes. But as you know on this channel, instead of worrying about something out of my control, I try to find solutions. Which is why I'm excited to talk about today's sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is a cool and unique way to invest because they're using innovation to help people defend their wealth. This is because they offer a chance to invest in something that does better when inflation is high, and that is contemporary art. Paintings from legends like Picasso and Banksy. This art has a price appreciation of 23% on average when inflation is above 3% like it is now. Masterworks enables you to invest in a stake in the iconic paintings by purchasing shares of them and allowing you to enjoy the benefit of art as an asset class without the high cost of purchasing the whole piece. Since 2020, Masterworks has sold three paintings, each returning over 30% net IRR to invest and their new offerings usually sell out in hours. As with all investments, your capital is at risk. The value of your portfolio can go down as well as up. But if you do invest and you want to diversify your portfolio, all you have to do is go to masterworks.io, create an account, check out what they have, and if you like what you see, invest in their unique offerings. And my subscribers get to skip their wait list. Check it out in the description and join over 380,000 members at masterworks.io today. So powered up, it's a great time to speak about the improvements made on the panel and processing. First you have that new A9 fifth generation processor and whether you have the smaller sizes with structural changes or this larger unit, the C2 with that new chip and the Evo moniker touting a new technology using deuterium and processing and proprietary EX tech is all supposed to provide a 30% brighter picture. Some more technical reviewers have mentioned that you can look to see if your C2 has a new EX panel by looking deep into the subpixel structure. If this is something you really want to see, you can use a jeweler's loop or you can use your cell phone on the macro lens and check out the subpixel structure to see that the new pixels would have a diagonal structure to them. But after looking close as I could with my phone, I'm not 100% sure that this specific 83 inch C2 has a new EX type panel. And whether it's marketing jargon or real differences, the LG C2 is noted to have just a brightness boost versus the brightness boost max of the G2 gallery series, 
which has an added heat dissipation tech similar to the heat sink of the Sony A90J. And I've heard the G2 with that max label doesn't seem to be noticeably brighter than the LG C2, and the fact that the C2 comes in the more mainstream form factor bodes well for the most popular W OLED to continue the pace in 2022. Now the OS, which is labeled WebOS 22 for the year, looks to be about the same as last year. No simple pop-up from the bottom, but instead a full screen homepage that anyone is sure to get lost in whether they want to or not. Many times you can find a game or a movie you have access through an app, which is kind of ideal, but a lot of times you just get sucked into different ads. Either way, the LG channels give you something to watch. There's all kinds of different apps, and it's easy enough to use even if it's not my favorite OS. That's easy to remedy with an external device, so let's move on to what most people watch, which is typical cable that I get from the YouTube TV app. Like the LG channels, the SDR or standard dynamic range is quite solid on the LG OLEDs. Every year, the LG C-Series OLEDs continue to improve with upscaling, and the A9 5th gen processor has the lower res YouTube TV looking nearly identical to my Sony A90J. And that holds true with motion as well. Whether you're a purist preferring no interpolation or you enjoy the smoothest motion, I find the LG C2 to have setting adjustments to make us all happy. And while the sound quality isn't that of even a mid-level soundbar, if you're primarily watching cable of any kind, that C2 in this 83 inch with that bounce plate pushing the sound out at you is pretty sufficient. So this TV is quite amazing for even basic TV content and it only gets better. When moving to HDR brightness, the C2 gets much more color and brightness. OLED TVs are known for their amazing contrast and specular highlights, and the C2 is pushing the limits with that brightness booster. Now I'm kidding, I just love the terms used. To make it really simple, last year the LG C1 in the cinema mode was not quite as bright as the Sony A90J when I compared them. This year it is, or it's at least much closer. It's amazing. I don't see a noticeable difference in the clarity either. More or less, the LG C2 looks like it's right on par with the Sony A90J, as long as you remember that the C2 isn't calibrated, and therefore it might not look quite as color accurate as the A90J. But again, the camera can play tricks on us all, and others may feel the opposite, or maybe that both of them look off. But from scene to scene, the C2 looks great. From the processing standpoint, I'm very happy with the motion control and the tone mapping. The near black tones look to be even better than the C1, which was a significantly improved from the C10. So again, LG continues to make stride with their 5th gen A9 chip. And if you weren't sold yet, gaming is the nail in the coffin. The LG C2 is lightning fast with all connectivity. Anything you plug into the C2 is instantly recognized and controllable by the TV remote. We have the PS5 and the X Series X, and it's definitely a pleasure to game on LG OLEDs. They have the four HDMI 2.1 ports that actually work, and with G-Sync and FreeSync, as well as a really cool and useful gaming bar, you can customize the different gaming genre profiles if you spend a good deal of time playing various titles. You can reduce the blue light, you can reduce the input lag even further, and just keep an eye on the gaming performance by pressing the sprocket on the remote while in game mode. We have a lot of TVs in the house for review purposes, and the kids gravitate to the LG C10 and now the C2 without even knowing why. That should tell you something about its gaming performance when there is an 83 inch Sony OLED sitting right there. The only test that I was really interested in checking out was to see if the panel was uniform. Last year there was a significant amount of complaints that people were getting LG panels that had uniformity issues. Some call it banding, some call it dirty screen effect. So we normally see this more on LED panels, but it shows up when you watch a hockey game or when gaming a bright screen moves left and right very fast, you see the dirty screen. And with much of the production of the LG panels being in China, some have thought that this new plant might be the source of some of the uniformity issues. And I'm happy to say that this 83 inch LG panel looks fantastic. I didn't notice any uniformity issues and that's a great sign. It doesn't mean that all the panels will be the same, so you either do this test yourself or you don't and never have to worry about it. Definitely one of those ignorance is bliss sort of tests, but I just wanted to do the due diligence since it'll be headed to someone else's home. And with that, I wanted to offer you some buying advice. 2022 is definitely an exciting year for TVs, and those who are making buying decisions have so many great options. Large OLEDs, mini LEDs, QD OLEDs, and earlier I had mentioned that it was perfect timing for me to have this 83 inch LG C2 for various reasons. One of those reasons is regarding all the hype surrounding the new QD OLEDs, 
which if they're as good as advertised, might siphon off some of the smaller traditional W OLED sales. But they're only offered in 55 and 65 inch sizes. So those looking to get bigger 77 and 83 inch TVs are still likely to buy a W OLED like this LG C2. And even the smaller size QD OLEDs look to be more expensive. So the C2 and the smaller sizes are over 20% less than the QD from Samsung and are tried and true winners from the gaming and HDR perspective. And I can imagine there may be two reasons why the C2 will continue to be successful in 2022. And that is the C2 is the best and most recent version of a TV that's been solid for years. You know what you're getting quality wise and now you're getting an even more competitive price. And secondly, I'm not quite sure the QD stock will hold up. I'm not trying to pretend that this new tech isn't exciting and I'll likely have a Samsung and Sony QD OLED. But is the first generation tech gonna hold up? Not just stock, but price and quality. So I think there's a good case to be made for those who want a smaller OLED for news or sports or HDR movies and especially gaming to consider buying a 65 inch or smaller LG C2. And when you get to the larger sizes, right now you have an 83 inch size in the LG C1, C2, G2, and A90J. All perfectly fine options, some better for specific buyers. I think the 83 inch LG C1, C2 would be a winner for almost anyone. Again, gaming and HDR is amazing, the tone mapping is great, and the regular cable upscaling is better than ever. And there's only a few differences between the C2 and A90J, like the more accurate color of the A90J as it was calibrated, better sound from the acoustic surface speakers, and maybe slightly better overall processing with the XR processor. But at the time of this video, the initial price of the LG C2 is the same as the A90J Master Series OLED. So I'm not sure there's a huge benefit to buying the C2 over the A90J unless you're a pretty serious gamer. I find the gaming on most TVs to be sufficient for my needs. So then it trickles down to other things like the slightly better processing, more accurate colors, and the much better speakers for the A90J. But if you're looking to stick with LG, I would say you should consider the form factor of both the LG C2 and G2 because they're quite different. The G2 is made for the wall. And if you want that flush look, it might be worth paying the extra $1,000 to achieve it. The G2 is supposed to be slightly brighter as well, but I have not seen it myself. I should have an 83 inch G2 once it's available for purchase. But I just like the C series because it looks so nice on the stand. It's a very classy OLED look and I'm a big fan. But that brings me to the biggest question, which is, is the C2 worth getting over the C1 of last year? And for that, I'd probably say it isn't in the 83 inch size. That LG C1 was brand new in the middle of last year, and I see so many similarities from the C2. The same body, the same stand, and speakers. And I'm not 100% sure that the panel is even upgraded, but the processor and the OS is. So to save $1,000, I would highly consider getting the C1 at this size, if available. I think you really can't go wrong either way, but that $1,000 for the newer product is always a tough pill to swallow. So what do you think? Is the LG C2 the perfect TV for you? Are you looking to get a larger size over the new QD OLED or even a mini LED? And if I missed anything else, please let me know in the comments. Please smash the like button on your way out and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already. And definitely check out the Tesla and GoPro videos over on Be The Consumer, linked right here. And I will see you on the next one.